By default, .NET 8 ASP.NET Core applications listen on HTTP localhost port 5000. However, you might need to override your app URLs for various reasons. The standard ports might already be in use or for specific deployment scenarios where you want to deploy multiple applications on the same server might be some of them. In this video, let's learn 8 different ways you can configure your ASP.NET Core's application URLs. Hello everyone, my name is Rahul and welcome back to this YouTube channel. If you're new here, I make videos on .NET, Cloud, and DevOps. Before we go into the different ways of configuring URLs, let's understand the different URL formats that ASP.NET Core applications support. Now, broadly, these are classified into three categories. You can either specify a local host with a specific port number, which is what the default one does. You can also specify an explicit IP address followed by a port number, or you can map to any of the IP address that's on your machine, again, with the port number. Now, let's see some of the examples Examples of these different types. Now, the local host, as you would expect, contains the word local host or the loopback IP, which is 127.0.0.1, again with specified with the port number. You can also specify an IP v6 address, which is represented here in the square brackets and a colon with a one. Now, the square brackets is required for v6 addresses because the v6 address by itself can contain colons. So, this is to separate the colons in the port and the actual address. Now, the second format has a specific IP. IP address followed by a port. Now, this could again be an IPv4 address or an IPv6 address, as shown in this example. Now, the third one is where you can bind to all of the IP addresses on your machine. Now, this is done by using a wildcard pattern. Now, anything that's not a local host or an IP address is considered to be a wildcard. So, in this example, you can see I have used star plus or even the word contoso.com to indicate that it has to match to any of these IP addresses. Now, now that we have a basic understanding of the different URL formats that ASP.NET supports, let's see how we can use them in our ASP.NET applications. Switching over to Rider, I have the default ASP.NET Core Web API application created here. Now this has the program.cs and also the other files associated with it. Let's run this application and see what happens. Now in this case, when I run the application, you can see on the console tab, it says it's listening on port 7124 and localhost 5000. 2019. However, I earlier said that it defaultly starts on port 5000. But what's happening here? In this default template, it's using one of the ways to specify the override URL. So this brings us to the first way of specifying an application URL, which is using launch settings.json file. So if we explore the files of this application, you can see there is a properties folder. And inside that, we have the launch settings.json file. Now, this is where we have the different application profiles files that's used to launch this application. Now, we selected one of them inside here when we clicked run on our application from the Rider IDE. Now, this is going to be exactly the same if you're using Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code to develop your applications. So, if I expand this, you can see this has three different options. Now, since the option that I selected was HTTPS, you can see in HTTPS, we have two ports specified, which is the HTTPS 7124 and also 5019. This is why the application started on these two ports because I had explicitly specified the application URL to start on these URLs. Now, this is using the local host followed by a specific port format from the examples before. Now, if you want to see the application launching on 5000 default port, let's comment these two lines from this launch settings file. So, let's comment the launch URL and the application URL. Now, once I have that, let's run again on the HTTPS profile. And this time here, you can see it's listening on port 5000. This is because we have not overridden this port on any of the ways. So it starts on the default port, which is 5000. Let's uncomment this. You can also see the same by using the .NET CLI and the run command and using an extra flag to ignore the launch profiles. So if I switch over to my console, let's specify .NET run and also specify the flag no launch profile. So this ignores the launch profiles specified in the launch settings.json. So if I run this, you can see that it's again going to launch on the default port. So you can see it's starting on localhost 5000 because it has not used the launch settings.json. So let's come back to our rider and let's see the different formats that we saw earlier. Now, in this case, it's launching on HTTPS localhost. Now, if I was to specify a specific IP address or the star wildcard pattern, this is going to launch on that as well. So let's switch over to the console 
to find my IP address. Now, I have a PowerShell script that I have written to loop through my IP address and print out the IP addresses. So let's run this. And you can see here, I have two IP address. This is because I am connected using the Wi-Fi and also using a network LAN cable on my local development machine. So this shows two IP addresses that's specified for my machine. So let's copy one of these and let's use this for the application launch URL. So let's remove the local host and specify the specific IP address. So in this case, if I run this again, you can see it asks to allow for this IP address. So let's specify allow and you can see the application has started on that specific IP address and the port and also on localhost HTTP because that's the two URLs we have specified. So if I navigate to my browser, let's navigate to the Swagger endpoint explicitly and you can see the Swagger is launching on that specific IP address. It will also be launched on the HTTP port. So if I navigate to this HTTP port, that's also going to show us the Swagger URL. So this application now starts up on both these URLs. Let's come back and see another example of the last pattern that we talked about, which is the wildcard pattern. So let's specify star for that specific format and let's run this again. Now this time you can see that it is listening on the wildcard pattern. So any of the IP addresses, it's listening on that and also on the localhost one, which is additionally specified. So if I navigate to the browser again and let's navigate to this IP address, which it was already listening on, let's navigate to the first IP address on my machine and this shows up as expected. Let's also copy the other IP address, which ends with 48. So let's replace this 50 by 48 and you will see that this application will run on that as well. So once navigating to it, you can see the swagger. So the application right now is running on both the IP addresses that's available on my machine. This is achieved by using the star in the pattern, the wildcard pattern. Now for the remaining cases, I'll be only showing one of the formats because you can specify any of these formats to achieve this behavior. So let's revert this back into localhost. This brings us to the second way you can specify the URL, which is by hard coding it in your application code. So let's switch over to a program.cs and let's see how we can do that. So let's switch over to program.cs to see that in action. So when we are creating the builder and the web application, so using the builder inside here, you can specify the builder.webhost and specify the use URLs method. So inside this, we can specify multiple URLs for this application to start. So let's specify in this specific case, HTTP PS colon localhost and let's specify the port 7126. Now this is going to explicitly start the application on that specific port. Now note that I also have the launch settings specified but let's see what happens. Now the application ignores whatever is in the launch settings and just starts listening on the use URLs. So since I have only specified one port it is only starting it on that one specific URL. So if I was to specify multiple values inside here so if I was to use comma separated and and also specify a local host port. So let's specify this as 5001 and let's run this. And this time it starts on both these URLs. So you can see it starts on the local host 5001 and also on 7126. The other way to hard code is specifying this on the web application, which is the third way of specifying the URL. So on the app instance, you can specify on the URLs collection and add new URLs to this. So if you want to specify a URL 5003 or let's also add add another port which is using the HTTPS. So let's specify add and let's specify HTTPS colon localhost and the port 7146. So let's run this. Now even in this case I have the host URL specified on the web host and also on the launch settings and finally on the web application. Now in this case this is only using the one that's specified on the web application. So you can see it's starting on 5003 and 7146 that I have specified inside the web application part. ASP.NET is ignoring the URLs specified before that. In these two scenarios, using the web host and the web application, we are hard coding these URLs inside the source code. This in general is not preferred because it removes the flexibility of changing it when needed during deployment. Now there's one more way you can specify it on the web application, which is finally on the code where we run this application. So the run method also takes an overload where you can specify the URL. So you can specify an explicit port inside this. So let's specify HTTPS 
and let's specify a port in here which is 7654 and let's run this again to see what happens now in this case it overrides all the urls before that and just runs on 7654 whatever is specified on the run method takes precedence over whatever is specified before that now in these three cases where you can specify on the run or on the urls on the web application or even specifying on the builder web host you are hard coding these urls inside the application code this removes all all the flexibility that you might need when you want to change this when deploying this application so let's stay away from hard coding these urls into the source code and move on to the fourth way which is using the environment variables so let's comment these out in here so that we can see the environment variables in action so let's comment all the different ways that we have specified let's also comment the run but I'll leave this in the code to refer back later. To use environment variables, you can either set it up on the machine that it is running, or in this scenario, I'll take the easier way and specify it in the launch settings file. So launch settings file also has a section for environment variables where you can specify the explicit variables that you need to use. Now note, you can also specify this on the machine as you would normally specify for environment variables. So let's comment out this application URL again so that it doesn't interfere with the environment variables and let's specify the first format so in this case you can specify the urls environment variable which overrides the application urls so in this specific case let's specify https localhost and let's specify the port 7324 and let's run this so you can see this is now starting on 7324 and it just runs on one port now if you want multiple urls you can do that by specifying a semicolon and specifying the next url just like we did it in the application url format now asp.net applications looks for three different variations of this urls environment variables you can either specify urls as is which will be used or you can specify .NET underscore URLs, or you can also specify the variable ASP net core underscore URLs. Now, in all these cases, note that it ends with URLs, which is the actual variable that .NET looks for. Now, you can either prefix it with ASP.NET Core or .NET so that you can clearly understand it is for .NET that you are overriding it when you're looking it in your environment variables in your system. But usually what .NET does is strips off these parts and just takes the URL part of it. Now, in this case, if you specify all three of them, the one which URLs is going to take the first precedence followed by ASP.NET Core and then .NET. So if you just specify one of them, it will take that. Or if you just specify both, it will take URLs if that exists or fall back to the next one as it exists. Similar to specifying the full URLs in the environment variables, we can also specify just the port that need to be overridden. This brings us to the fifth way. So let's comment all this out and let's add the ports environment variable. So for that, we can specify HTTPS ports or you can also specify HTTP ports for overriding the default HTTP port. So if I was to specify both of them, so let's specify HTTP ports. Let's specify a value for this. So let's specify 7, 8, 9, 6. And let's also specify 5, 4, 3, 2. So if I have both of these and let's run this. In this case, you can see that it is using these two ports to start the application on and it's listening on any of the IP addresses. So it's overriding the ports and following the format of the wildcard IP, which means I won't be able to navigate to this using localhost, but I'll have to explicitly specify one of the IP addresses that my machine is assigned to. So if I navigate back to the browser, I have the IP address. So let's use the port 7896. Or let's change this. And if I navigate to that, you can see our application is running on that IP and on that overridden port. Now, again, with this HTTPS ports, you can prefix this with ASP.NET Core or .NET like before in the URLs. And it follows the same precedence rule that applies to the URLs. So let's comment this out again and let's leave that in there. Which brings us to the seventh way of overriding ports, which is using appsettings.json file. Now, the environment variables that we specified inside the launch settings, which could ideally be at your machine level, can also be specified in your app settings file because the .NET configuration provider looks at all these sources to load up its application configurations. If you're new to .NET configuration, I highly recommend checking out my video linked here and in the descriptions below. So to see this in action in app settings, let's navigate 
related to app settings file and let's specify the urls property this is case insensitive so we can specify this in lower case and let's specify https colon localhost and let's specify another port 6543 again you can specify two ports so if you want http you can also specify that let's run this and you can see it's starting on these two ports which we have defined as urls in app settings file so it starts up on the http and also on the https scheme now very similar to the urls you can also specify the https underscore ports and use that to override the variables so you can specify https underscore ports and specify a value here to start using it for the https port so if i was to give 7568 it's going to start up on that port so let's comment this out again which brings us to the seventh way of specifying which is using command line arguments so if i switch back to the console and specify dotnet run and let's specify no launch url and let's also specify the urls properly so let's specify dash dash urls and let's specify http colon localhost and let's specify a port in this case now this is going to start the application on the port 5345 so you can see it's only starting on one of these ports now if you want you can also specify multiple urls like before so let's use semicolon and let's start this also on a https port and let's use 7543 as the port now this application is going to start on the ports if i give it correctly so i have spelled https wrong so let's fix that again so let's come back and specify https and let's run this again so this time it runs successfully and starts the application on both those ports this brings us to the final way of specifying the url which is directly configuring on the kestrel web server so kestrel is the default web server that is set up for asp.net applications now dotnet also supports specifying these ports directly on the web server so let's see how we can do that so let's stop our application let's come back to our program.cs and let's go into the builder so inside this let's specify builder and like similar on the web host you can specify on configure kestrel method which is directly specifying the configuration on the kestrel web server now in this case let's takes in an options delegate so let's use that and you can specify different port options in here so you can specify a listen local host and specify a port so in this case let's specify 6789 and run this application so this is going to configure the application on the kestrel directly and ask it to start on this port so the application starts and it starts on the port 6789 which we have specified to override in the kestrel now this also provides other overrides that you can use to specify the ports and the different url formats that is defaultly supported so let's see one more format where we can specify ip address dot any and let's specify a port so let's specify 7234 you can also specify an options inside here optionally which can be used to specify the https so once we have the listen options you can say listen options dot use https so this is used to enable https ports directly on the kestrel so let's format this a bit so that it's more readable and you can see here we are configuring the kestrel specifying it to listen on ip address any and on port 7234 we have also configured that it's going to use https now if i run this again it's going to start up this on the local ip addresses and using the https so as you can see it specifies the 000 which specifies any of the ip and on that that specified port so if i was to navigate back let's use the port which is 7234 so let's navigate to that port and our application is listening on that now inside the use https you can also specify the explicit certificate details that this server needs to use now very similar to the previous case where you were hard coding this in the application code this reduces flexibility so let's comment this out and see how we can specify this in the app settings.json so if i navigate back into app settings.json you can add in a new section which is going to be kestrel and use that to configure the http url so in this case it's specifying the endpoints the stdb and the url to be used which is 5009 so if i run this again this is going to use this configuration to override the kestrel configuration directly and specify the application ports so you can see here this is now starting up on stdp localhost 5009 the kestrel configuration also supports specifying the certificates and other configuration options as you can see in the documentation here for which i will put a link in the descriptions below now this gives you a great flexibility to use 
use the application configuration and override the Kestrel configurations directly using the app settings.json file. So that shows all the eight different ways you can override your application URLs for your ASP.NET Core application. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you want to be notified of future such videos, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you and see you soon in the next video.